Hey everybody, Evan here for another HTV Spotlight. This week, we've got Virginia Corbett of the Virginia Corbett Home Team at Remax Town & Country. Hi Virginia. Hi Evan. So, a home is a major investment. Uh, what can homeowners do to ensure a good return on that investment? Well, as with anything that you own, the best way to care for it is by t taking proper maintenance. And so when you have a home, there are many obvious things. There's a lot of mechanical components to a home. Those are things that you want to maintain as directed. For example, you want to have your furnace serviced every year. You want to have your gutters cleaned. You want to have your septic tank pumped at the recommended schedule. If you don't, and then when you're trying to sell your home and then you have to kind of bring those things up to par, it can sometimes be challenging and more costly than if you just maintained it all along. I find that going into hundreds of homes, you start to have a feel and a sense where I can walk into a home and I feel this is a well-maintained home. And I've heard that out of many buyers. They would just say something like, you can tell the seller really took care of their home. So it is really important, that type of routine maintenance. So routine maintenance, routine maintenance and upkeep really do affect resale and, you know, value. Yes, definitely. And the other thing I want to add, and I would shout this from the mountaintops if I could. Please, if you're doing work in your home, get a building permit. Oh, yes. Get a that is one of the biggest mistakes that homeowners make. They want to avoid the hassle, they want to avoid the taxes. There is nothing more painful than trying to get a retroactive CO when you're in the middle of a transaction. It can delay by months, it can kill a deal, and you can be left in a much worse situation than if you'd just taken the proper measures from the start. So, you know, cutting corners does come back, it always comes back around when you try and resell later on. Yeah, unfortunately, there's very little way around that. It will cost you money in the end. Interesting. And so what are the best ways that homeowners can get their homes ready to list, ready to shoot media for? So, I sell a lot of homes and I meet with a lot of, I, several homeowners a week about their properties. Sometimes I'm meeting with them a week or two before they're ready to put their home on the market. Sometimes I'm meeting with them six months and they're always asking, well, what should we do while we're getting ready to, for, to put our home on the market? And my biggest thing that I tell them is, I don't want you to spend a dollar to make a dollar. Or worse yet, I don't want you to spend a dollar to make 75 cents. I only want you to spend a dollar if you're gonna make two dollars because it's not just your money, it's your time and energy. And also it's going to take you longer to get your home on the market. And meanwhile, you're paying a mortgage and taxes and upkeep. So it's actually costing you money the longer you own a home. So I I have about six things that I always recommend that homeowners think about doing when they're getting their home ready for the market. And most of them are, are they're not, it's not rocket science, really. It's, it's pretty basic, but they might not think about it. Most of them are high sweat equity investment and low to moderate check equity investment. So I'll go through these super quick. So okay. the first two, everyone knows, cleaning and decluttering. Okay. Those are the number two things, that, number one and two things that you can do to get your home ready on the market. Your home needs to be spotless, windows, floors, baseboards. People are gonna open your refrigerator, so please make sure your refrigerator's clean, right? Because then they think, oh, you're really not that clean, do I want your house? Uh, uh, decluttering. I wanna see furniture, not too much, and I wanna see a few key decor items, but I don't wanna see a loaded coffee table with candles and books and, and tchotchkes. I'm a very anti-tchotchke person. Uh, I, I tell sellers, I walk through the house and I give and I say that needs to go that needs to go that needs to go and I tell them when you feel uncomfortable about how bare your home looks that means you're actually starting to get to the point where you need to be and those sellers that that kind of trust me and they they, they follow that and they do what feels uncomfortable to them when they see the photos they're just blown away because it's their home that's shining it's not their personal decor which may or may not be of the same taste of the people that are going to be coming into your home. So depersonalizing and decluttering is incredibly important. 
The next is curb appeal. You need to make the outside of your home look as beautiful as the inside of your home. Uh, great things to do are putting new mulch in your flower beds and just making sure your plants are, you know, bright and, and, and alive. <laughs> you know? uh, if you have a patio, stage that you know, with a nice table, umbrella, you know, that sort of thing. Make it look nice. The outside is the first thing. The front outside of your home is the very first thing people see when they come. So you want to have, you want to make a good impression. The fourth thing is fixing small items, ripped window screens, busted light switches, cracked baseboards. And you might think it's just, it's just a wind, it's just a light switch. What's the big deal? As the buyer's walking through the home, they're seeing that. And consciously or subconsciously, they're thinking, God, maybe this person didn't maintain their home so well. They couldn't even switch. They couldn't even fix a broken light switch. What else is broken that I can't see? It's just kind of impression you don't want them to have. The fifth is painting, and that we always hear about. Paint is a type of thing you spend a hundred bucks, you make a thousand. Yep. Um, if your walls are marked up, scuffed up, you want to have them fresh, bright, and clean. If you've got like some crazy colors going on, you might want to consider covering that up with a decorator white, an antique white, or depending on the colors of your floors, a uh, light gray is actually a very popular color. You want something light, neutral, and bright. It makes your home look bigger, makes your rooms look brighter, and no one's going to have a negative reaction. No buyer walks into a house and says, oh my God, look at that, look at those white walls. They might say, oh my God, look at those burnt sienna walls. And I ha had a house of burnt sienna, but that's not for everybody. <laughs> so painting neutral, bright, good, good investment. And it's something that most people can do themselves. The sixth is probably the most costly, but it also is a very, uh, it's a good art. There's a good return on investment for the money that you're putting in. And that is your flooring. If you have hardwood floors, nothing makes buyers go gaga more than gleaming bright hardwood floors. So if you have them there, they're a great asset. If they're covered by carpet, you may want to consider pulling off that carpet, refinishing them, make them bright and gleaming. If your carpets are tattered and stained and, and you know smelly, you're going to want to get rid of them. Flooring is a very important part of a home. Sure. So those are the six main things. You know, there's other other small things like making sure all your light bulbs are working and they're the bright white light bulbs, not the yellow tone light bulbs to make your home look brighter. If your kitchen bathrooms are a little dated, you can do things like switching out um, the uh, hardware, you know, maybe some paint in the cabinets. But most in most cases, we're not going to recommend a kitchen remodel because you're not going to make your money back and you're certainly not going to make double your money back. Sure. So those are the things that I usually talk to sellers about doing. So it really sounds like not so much a monetary investment, but an investment in a little time, a little elbow grease and uh, getting rid of some junk. Yep. That's awesome. about it. Sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate having this, this opportunity. Oh, of course. Thank you again. And everybody, that was Virginia Corbett of the Virginia Corbett Home Team at Remax Town & Country. And we'll see you next week.